read chapter 2 of this letter to Timothy and the sermon I preached from this section I called Endure in His Strength. This is a great section that picks up many of the key themes that we see emerging from the book as a whole. But as always, I do encourage you to just take some time to read through the passage for yourself, familiarize yourself with the key things that Paul is trying to tell Timothy in this section. And we know that we can't do this work in our own strength. And so take some time to pray, ask God to strengthen you for the task of digging into his word so that you might understand it rightly, so that you might pass it on correctly, which is in many ways one of the key things this passage is calling us to do. And as always, I'm going to just show some of what I've seen in this passage, and I hope that this is helpful in your preparation and your understanding of this part of God's truth. So in this section, as I called it, enduring his strength, our Lord Jesus is very much in the spotlight throughout this section. And this key command here, remember Jesus Christ. Just an interesting thing to note, uh, all the other references to our Lord Jesus within this letter are Christ to Jesus, Christ Jesus, Christ Jesus where this one is, remember, Jesus Christ. And uh, Paul is doing this just to highlight the the human nature of Jesus. He was Jesus, the man Jesus, who was the Christ, descended from David here, showing that he was the promised king, the one who God had promised to David who would come and be a forever king, uh, the long-awaited Old Testament uh, Christ, Messiah, who would deal with the problem of sin that was that entered in when Adam and Eve fell in the garden. So the focus is very much on our Lord Jesus. And as we look at this overarching theme of finishing the work of proclaiming Christ by continuing in the truth as you endure suffering in view of the life to come, all of these themes emerge from this passage where we see finish the work of proclaiming Christ. He says, and the things you have heard me say, in the presence of many witnesses, in trust to reliable people who will be qualified to teach others. So finishing this work um, of passing on this truth, in trust to reliable people, uh, this truth, who will be qualified to teach others. So he's saying finish this work of proclaiming Christ and find others who will help you to proclaim Christ well as well. By continuing in the truth, Uh, Paul speaks about this truth in a few different ways in this passage. So he speaks about it as the grace that is in Christ Jesus. He speaks about it as the gospel, my gospel. He speaks of it as God's word, which is not chained. A glorious little statement there. And he also speaks about it as the things you have heard me say. So Paul was the one who uh, had this truth that God had revealed to him, and he wanted that truth to be handed on. But he also knew that it was that truth that Timothy and those who followed him would need to be strong in, this grace, this gospel, uh, God's word that is not chained. Uh, That is what would uh, strengthen him to finish this work of proclaiming Christ. And then as you endure suffering, uh, we see the same command that we saw in chapter 1, verse 8, Uh, that's the only two places in the New Testament that this uh, imperative is used. Join with me in suffering. It's used in chapter 1, verse 8, and here in chapter 2, verse 3. And we see Paul also says it's for this gospel that he is suffering. But he says here, I endure everything for the sake of the elect. And if we endure, we will also reign with him. Uh, All in this idea of enduring suffering, Uh, we see just this repetition, I endure if we endure. And then all in view of the life to come, uh, we see this repetition where Paul speaks of the victor's crown. He speaks of a share in the crops. He speaks of wanting to please his commanding officer. Uh, That's kind of the idea of waiting for that day when we hear from Jesus, our commanding officer, those words, Well done, good and faithful servant. He speaks here of the eternal glory, and then he speaks of those who will live with him and reign with him. 
Uh, so we see all of these themes, finishing this work of proclaiming Christ, so entrust this truth to others, continue in the truth. We see it all through the passage, this reality of suffering, enduring suffering, joining with me in suffering, all in view of the life to come. Uh, the victor's crown that has been secured by our Lord Jesus for all those who trust in him. So all of these big themes that we've already seen in the book emerge here. Uh, but we also see some very key imperatives. And in Paul's writings, it's, it's worth just looking out for the imperatives. So I'm just going to highlight where we see these imperatives. So here, be strong is an imperative. And actually, that also falls under this idea of suffering, enduring suffering. Be strong. Uh, it's a command. This word entrust, it's an imperative, a command. Remember Jesus Christ. It's an imperative. We absolutely need to remember Jesus Christ. And then we've already seen this imperative in the previous section, but it's here again. It is imperative to join with me in suffering for this gospel. So very important commands here. Be strong in the grace. Entrust this truth to others. Join with me in suffering. Remember Jesus Christ. And for what point? Now that's where verse 10 is just such an important verse in this section. Why is it worth being strong, entrusting, joining, remembering Jesus? Therefore, I endure everything for the sake of the elect, that they too may obtain the salvation that is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. Paul is wanting to make sure that this truth, this God's word that is not chained, this truth continues to ring out, that Christ is proclaimed so that others might obtain the salvation that is in Christ Jesus and that they might make it to the end, that they won't only be saved, but they'll also be strengthened by this truth to continue as disciples of Jesus until that day when they are with Jesus in glory. And just looking a little bit more deeply at these imperatives, so you then be strong. Now, this isn't a strength in yourself. He qualifies it. Be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. It, that's where we find the strength to keep going. We, we find strength in the grace that is ours because of Jesus. Jesus has won our salvation. We've done nothing to deserve this. And as we reflect on what Jesus has done for us, Paul says, be strong in that amazing grace. And we need to be strong because the race ahead of us is hard. The second command he gives here, entrust these things, this truth, entrust it to others. We need to do that because we aren't going to be in the race forever. Timothy, Timothy's race would come to an end, just like Paul's was coming to an end. So Paul is saying, entrust these truths to others. And it is going to be hard, so he commands him, join with me. Join with me in suffering. And then he qualifies this with these three illustrations of a good soldier, of an athlete, and a hardworking farmer. Now the good soldier, he says, he doesn't get entangled in civilian affairs. Now I don't think that this is talking about a sacred secular divide. Rather, it's warning us not to let secular things uh, distract us from the sacred task of proclaiming Christ. But rather, we want to please our commanding officer. And that means we want to keep proclaiming Christ so that others will know him. And so that on that day, as a good soldier, we might stand before Jesus and hear him say, Well done, my good and faithful servant. Uh, he is the one, our commanding officer, Jesus, is the one who has won the war. So we're not fighting to win the war, but we are fighting to win souls. That's why we want to pass this truth on to others and continue to proclaim this word of God that is not chained so that others might be saved. So as soldiers of Christ, the work we're doing is the work of seeing souls saved by Jesus. Then he gives this second illustration Anyone competing as an athlete doesn't receive the victor's crown except by competing according to the rules. Now, importantly, the rules aren't rules in order to win our salvation. 
because we are looking to Jesus. Remember Jesus Christ. He's the one who ran this race ahead of us. He died to save us and he was raised from the dead. So we're not running or competing as athletes in order to try win our salvation. That's been won. Rather, we want to compete according to the rules, the rules that Jesus gave in Matthew 28, where he said, go, make disciples of all nations. We want to see disciples of Jesus made and disciples of Jesus matured. So that's what, those are the rules we want to follow, doing what Jesus called us to do. And the hardworking farmer should be the first to receive a share of the crops. The focus here is on this word, hard, the hard working farmer, not the lazy farmer. And we want to join in suffering and that's going to be hard. Giving our all, toiling, all so that others might be saved. That's what Paul was on about. Verse 10 again, therefore I endure everything for the sake of the elect that they too may obtain the salvation that is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. Paul wanted people saved and he wanted them strengthened in the truth so that they would make it to eternity one day with Jesus. And the thing that's going to motivate him to join in suffering like a soldier, an athlete, a hardworking farmer, is as he himself puts the spotlight on Jesus. Remember Jesus Christ, raised from the dead. He's conquered death. He defeated death that we saw in chapter 1. He's secured life and immortality for those who are saved by him. This is my gospel for which I'm suffering. Paul was suffering, even to the point of being chained, but you can almost feel his confidence oozing out of his prison cell as he says, God's word is not chained. You can't stop God's word advancing. So Paul says, I'll endure anything, everything, even if it means being chained like a criminal. Uh, that word is, is the same word for traitor. That's how uh, people were speaking about Paul, but he's saying, actually, no, God's word isn't chained. I don't need to worry about being chained myself. I'll endure anything so that others might be saved and make it to glory one day. And then in this final trustworthy saying here, uh, we see Paul pulls these threads together and he puts the focus on Jesus again. Jesus is in the spotlight and he's saying, well, if we die with him, uh, that's worth enduring because we will live with him. Another focus on suffering. If we die with him, we'll also live with him. If we endure, we will also reign with him. So the future is sure. But there is a massive warning here. If we disown him, he will disown us. Uh, this verse is talking about apostasy. Uh, those who turn away from Jesus. Uh, clearly those were not a part of the elect. Those who had been chosen before the foundation of the world to belong to Jesus. And if they then disown him, he will disown them. And that is a terrible, terrible thing to one day face Jesus as judge. And Jesus will say, away from me, you evildoer, I never knew you. But here he says, if we are faithless, he remains faithful for he cannot disown himself. Even when we are faithless and sin, he remains faithful and will forgive us. So we can and we must be strong in his grace until the end, uh, trusting that he is the faithful one. He's the one who won the battle for us. He is the one who ran this race ahead of us. He did the hard work of securing our salvation. And so now we want to be strong in his grace, passing this truth on to others as we endure suffering for Jesus. And to do this well, we need to keep our eyes on Jesus remembering Jesus Christ and all that he has done for us. So there really are wonderful truths to rejoice in in this passage. And so as you dig in further, I pray that you would rejoice in Jesus and all that he's done, all that he's secured for us, that you'd be strong in him and that you would pass this truth on. It's entrusted to others who will continue with this work after we're gone. May we run in a way to win the prize, the victor's crown, when we will be with Jesus for all eternity, rejoicing in the salvation that he's won for us. And we want others to join us there. So let's be strong in his grace as we continue with his work for the good of others and for the glory of his name alone. Well, God bless as you dig in further.